everyone. Happy Wednesday. Who's ready to take more listings? Put it in the chat. If you're ready to take more listings in quarter four, say yes in the chat. Yes, I love it. Well, I'm Emily Baker. I'm here with my partner, Aaron Simons, as Madeline mentioned, and we're excited to talk to you about one of our favorite things. Today is going to be jam-packed, and we're going to talk about the strategies of a mega listing agent to get you to do just that, to take more listings in quarter four, because we know quarter four determines your quarter one closings, right? All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Erin, what's the first thing that we need to focus on as a listing agent that would cause us to be more successful in quarter one? Yeah. And like I said, you know, we have to remember that where we're at right now in the year is everything we're doing is going to not just for quarter one, but it's also for a strong end of the year as well. And so the number one strategy is we time block our calendar. And Emily, this is one that we see, uh, we all understand what time blocking is, right? Hey, we have a block of time in there that we're supposed to do certain activities. And what I find though, is the challenge, no one on this call, Emily, of course, but for some of those other agents out there, one of the biggest challenges is actually honoring the time block. Now, when we talk about time blocking, the most important thing we can do as a listing agent is time blocking our lead gen time, okay? Because that, that's where it all starts. And let's just, if, if it's okay, um, let me just share with you the challenges of what happens. Because in a perfect world, we have in our calendar time blocked from nine to 11 each day, lead gen, right? We're gonna go out and we're gonna do our lead gen to find people who wanna, who wanna sell or buy, right? However, the challenge we have is that there's always fires happening in the real estate world, right? There's always a current client who needs us. There's a deal that's falling apart. There's life outside of real estate happening. You know, and so one of the biggest challenges in the time blocking is not that we don't understand how to do it. It's how do we keep that commitment? And Emily, one thing that I learned uh, a long time ago is that when we look at our time blocks, we have to treat a time block as if it is a listing appointment. So if we had a listing appointment this afternoon at two o'clock, right, and we're sitting in front of a seller and we have a time block from two to three, if life is happening outside that appointment, are we doing anything about it? No. If if we have a client trying to call us and we're in the middle of a listing appointment, are we doing anything about it? No, of course not. We have our 100% undivided attention on that client, right? Because it's the most important thing we can be doing. If we're sitting there checking our phone, right? Or running out to our car during a listing appointment, that would be absolutely absurd. And yet, when we know the most important thing that we can do is make sure we're time blocked for Legion to go out and find, right, these sellers, we that's that's exactly what we do. We don't honor it. And so there's a very simple method, right? Very simple, we'll call it a hack, if you will, on how to honor our time block. In fact, can we role play this, Emily? Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So we've got it time blocked from nine to eleven to call our people. Doesn't matter who you're calling, whether it's your database, whether you're doing outbound legion, TCPA compliant, right? Doesn't matter. We've got a time block. So nine to 11, we're lead generating. Now it's 930. And guess what? I've got a client calling me because they have a challenge. They've got a challenge, right? What do I do? What do I do? Do I A, ignore the call? Oh, I, I didn't tell you this was going to be a test. Is it A, <laughs> do, I, do I ignore the call because we're focused, we're time blocked, right? B, do I answer it, right? And handle that problem right then and there? Or C, do I send them a message that I'm in an appointment and I'll call them right when I finish at 11 o'clock? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Someone, someone in the text got it, right? Yet, what do most agents do, right? They choose option B, which is answer the call. And then all of a sudden, two hours later, right, they're, they're down a rabbit hole. What we know we can't do is ignore it. Everyone says, oh, you know, ignore it. You can't because it'll continue to fester and you're going to have anxiety, right? We know that answering it's not the right thing. So the, and I'll wrap up time blocking with this thought. The most important thing we can do is just send them a quick message, whether it's a phone call, a text or an email on how they're trying to get us off our block, 
We respond by saying, hey, got your, got your message. I'm in an appointment. Let me call you at 11 when I finish. That way, we've responded to them in a timely manner, right? So they're not getting upset on where's my agent, right? We've set a clear expectation on when we're going to get back to them. So now, right, we can stay focused on our lead gen. Yep. Anything you want to add to that on time blocking? You know, I think that it, it, Gary said this a couple of years ago. Someone asked him, what's the most impactful thing that an agent can do? What's the one thing that can that they could do that if they did it, they would automatically be successful? And he said, time block, follow the time blocks. And it goes back to we either plan to win or we plan to fail. And the choice is yours. And so it's planning out your calendar and showing up at a high level. So I love it. All right, next, what is the top strategy of a mega listing agent? Pre-qualification, name of the game. You want to sign more appointments. If your conversion on held appointment to signed is not where you want it to be, and for a lot of us, it's not, um, it's pre-qualification. That's what it boils down to. And we use a simple technique here, LTP Mama, and it's location, timeline, price, mortgage, agency, motivation, appointment. Now we don't use it in any specific uh, sequence. So it's not that you have to get, you know, location and timeline and price and, and that stuff in order. It's just that we get that before. And I'll share with you, you know, a couple things here. Number one, motivation moves. Motivation moves. And number two, timeline always reveals the objection. And what I find a lot of times is people uh, will say, you know, Emily, people just aren't motivated right now. No one's motivated. Have you all felt like that recently? It's hard to find the motivated. There's a lot of objections out there based on the market. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're not alone for those of you who are, are, are uh, being honest here, because I think we're all feeling that way in, in some sense. And the reality is, is that we just need to ask people the question of by when, by when do they need to make a decision? By when are they going to move? So if someone says, you know, well, I mean, we don't have to move. Oh, of course you don't have to do anything. And yet by when would you ideally make a move? Well, ideally it'd be by the end of the year. Awesome. And what does that do for you moving by the end of the year? Moving is a lot of work, right? Who on, who on this call actually likes to physically move? Y'all moved in the last five years. It's awful, <laughs> right? You're always like, how do I, how have I acquired all of this stuff? Like, why do I even have this much stuff, right? Moving is a lot of work. What's in it for them? What do they gain by moving? And if they don't move by that time frame, are they okay with it? What's the cost? Aaron, what would you add to that? You know what? You you said three really great things. And number one, you know, you were talking about a uh, listing appointment to contract signed, right? Mm -hmm. And a successful presentation is a function of a strong pre-qualification, right? And so I just want to make sure you all are clear. If you want to have a high conversion rate at the appointment, it all comes down to how well you're pre-qualifying. Because what, what's the alternative? You're going to walk in like a gunslinger and wing it, right? If you're not asking the questions ahead of time, how are you going to know? How are you going to know what's important, right? And the second thing that you said that I think we got, we got to make sure we're clear about is when we pre-qual, we know the objections ahead of time, right? We understand their expectations on pricing. We understand their expectations, maybe even on commission, because that oftentimes comes up. We know if they're going to be interviewing agents and if so, who and when, right? Because if we don't know those objections ahead of time, we're not going to be very successful when we're in front of them. We're not going to know what to talk about. And then the third thing you said was as you were as you were going deep into the motivation, right? You know, and really, really pinning that down. Some people call it going 3D. I think what that does is now instead of us walking in and talking about like us or their house, right? What we get to talk about is what moving allows them to do. 
right? Because it's one thing that they're moving to Chicago. Okay, great, that's exciting. However, if it's they're moving to Chicago because it's a job promotion, which is gonna allow them to retire early so they can fulfill their life mission of you know, doing whatever it is that is, and we're talking about that, that's way more powerful than you're moving to Chicago. Exactly right. That's what I took away from what you said. Did I get it all? Yep. LTP all right. comma. Yep. All Free right. Ball. Next. Oh, so top, top strategy is having a clear, unique value proposition. Because Emily, two, if, if all right, here's what happens. Sometimes what it comes down to when you're in a listing appointment is why should I choose you? Why should I choose you? And if you don't have a clear cut, confident answer on why that seller should choose you, they're not going to. And what I find with the value proposition, and I know what everyone is hoping is that we're going to give them this wonderful, pro it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter exactly what our value proposition is. What matters is that we have one and we have an answer. Because one thing that I learned um, going on, you know, over a thousand appointments and, and you're in that same boat is that at the end of the day, if that seller is interviewing agents, and let's be honest, the majority of sellers are interviewing agents, at the end of it, do we all sound the same? Yes. It doesn't matter if you're spending $30,000 a month on radio and TV advertising, and that's your unique advantage, and the next person has never sold a house, at the end of it, they're left thinking, wow, you all sound so great. They can't decipher between one value proposition versus another. What they can decipher between is confidence. Wow, they had something confident to say, right? They were very clear that I should choose them because they're going to sell my home quickly, get me top dollar and make it as easy and hassle-free as possible, right? And so when we're talking about, and by the way, is that not the classic value proposition? Get your home sold quickly. We're going to do it for top dollar and we're going to make it easy and hassle-free. Maybe you can throw in communication if you want to, right? Um, that's as clear as it needs to be. It's how we deliver it with confidence that's going to have us be successful. Not what's in it, how we deliver it. What do you, I mean, what would you say to value proposition? Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. I think that it goes back to when you know your value and you know what you offer, it, confidence kills uncertainty. So if I'm extremely confident in who I am and what I do and why they would hire me, that's only going to translate to the client being confident in me, right? It's energy transferring. So it doesn't have to be overly sexy. We don't have to have this like long laundry list of here's the 101 things that I do when you hire me. Nobody cares. They don't read that stuff anyways, y'all. The most important thing is that you know exactly how you're going to help the client, which goes to back to their motivation. And you can say, listen, based on what we've talked about today, you know, I, I really enjoyed our, our connection and I, I know that I can help you. I'm extremely confident that I'm going to sell your home quickly for top dollar and I'm going to make it as simple and stress-free as possible. And that's ultimately what you guys want in your move to Chicago. Can we agree? Relocating is a lot of work and I'm going to be able to help you every step of the way. Yeah, I, I think they another- just to, They just want to hear you say it. With confidence. Look, another clear way we can say it is, I'm going to make your home look better than any other house on the market. I'm going to expose it to every buyer in the marketplace. And I'm going to make sure that on the negotiation side, I'm going to have that buyer pay more than they wanted to and still feel good about it. Okay, sign me up. And all sign I heard you say, Aaron, just for everyone on this call is professional photography, MLS, and a marketing strategy to yield the most amount of showings for offers. That's all I heard. That's it. That's it. Don't overthink it, guys. Don't, you know, you know, what's my mo for? I mean, it doesn't matter. Clear, confident, simple, basic. It's how you deliver it. That's exactly right. All right. We're just rocking and rolling. So we're going to go on to the fourth strategy, which is know your numbers. Gary always talks about being the economist of choice and how important that that is. And I cannot stress this enough. How many of you, when you're out and about, 
just raise your hand or put it in the chat. How many of you get asked how the real estate market is? Great. Every person on this call. Cool. Me too. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I'm tired. I need a break of talking about real estate, right? Y'all feel me? So when we look at this from knowing your numbers, facts, Trump feelings, and that's what I want y'all to write down. Facts, Trump feelings. There are two things that are that, well, three things that are really, really important when it comes to giving people perspective, because that's all we are. We're giving them perspective of the market such that they make a decision. So many times, Aaron said this uh, last week on our webinar, so many times agents will give great information and leave it at that. Information yeah. for information's sake is good for nothing, right? If that were the case, Google would be charging you a subscription. The goal of information is to make a decision. So there are three parts of that. Number one, the macro market. Macro equals national. What's happening? What are the historical trends of real estate? That gives perspective because can we all agree that history tends to repeat itself? Yep. Cool. All right. Number two, micro market. That is your local market, whether that is a zip code, whether that's a school district, whether that's a geographical area. Whatever your market is, your target market, that is your micro market. What is happening at a local level? And the last one is your CMA. What is, what is happening in their specific neighborhood? What is their competition doing? If I'm a buyer, what are the two to three houses that I would shop in comparison to theirs and what's happening with those houses. So when you give perspective of knowing your numbers, and again, it goes back to the confidence thing that we're talking about. When you know the numbers and you prepare and you can articulate it, you know how many times y'all that I explain the macro market and the micro market on a weekly basis? It's literally ridiculous. I could literally say it in my sleep. At this point, my kids could say it, honestly. I really honestly could like my 13 year old could come on here and literally tell you what's happening in the real estate market. And the the thing is, is that when you say it enough, you don't get any, like people don't even question it. They're like, oh, that makes sense. Wow. That's surprising. The media is saying this. Yeah, you know, that's what they do. The media always talks about the bad. Remember COVID when the real estate market was going to shut down and it was going to crash and did that happen? No, it did the opposite. And everybody knows that. And so then authorship is ownership. So facts trump feelings and it's our job to not give our opinion because our opinions don't matter. It's our job to educate them on what's actually happening such that they can make the best decision to move forward financially. And you know what, Emily, as you're talking about knowing numbers, obviously we're, we're talking about it from a, a pricing standpoint. And then, you know, this, this will roll right into our, our next strategy and our last one, which is number five. Um, numbers are also metrics, right? And first off, everything you did there was a fantastic script, which you practiced over and over again. And one of the biggest challenges out there I know is price reductions. Yep. I've had that conversation already a handful of times today with, with clients is that the, the market's moving relatively quickly and knowing your numbers also comes in handy for price reductions or metrics, because there is a simple formula that we always used with our clients to know if the home was priced or not. I know you guys are probably familiar with what, you know, the National Association of Realtor has, right? Two weeks, 10 showings, whatever. We actually broke it down into four metrics. Number one, if we're priced right, we're going to see three to five showings per week. Number two, we're going to have buyers come back for second looks. Number three, we're going to have positive feedback from the agents and the clients. And number four, we're going to have offers or talk of offers. If we're seeing those four metrics, we know we're priced where we need to be. If not, if we're only seeing three out of four, two out of four, the market's telling us we've pushed it too far. Oftentimes, if we're seeing some, but not all, we're probably 5% off. If we're seeing no metrics and it's crickets, then we're probably 10% off. 
So that's kind of a combination, Emily, of knowing our numbers and also yeah. practicing and role playing these conversations. And also, well, go ahead. What do you want to add to that? Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, practice and role play is the hands down one of the most important things that we could do as agents. I think a lot of times when people go, oh, how do you, how do you sell over a hundred listings a year? How do you train people to sell over a hundred listings a year? It's not, I'm telling you, it is so boring. We literally look at the numbers and we literally go through the objection and every single week, every single day to the day, we would go, what's the objection that this listing is going to bring us? Great. Let's role play it right now. Such that every time you walk into the door, you're already confident. Too many times we're practicing on our clients. And as my favorite page and shift is, you know, I've got a lot of good ones, but my favorite page is in the preface. Whenever Gary's talking about a lot of times that we practice and we expect the pay that playing the game would actually bring. And we practice on our clients versus, you know, I always tell, tell my clients, I'm like, I don't want to stay ahead of y'all. Like I have some really smart coaching clients. I, I practice on my friends. I practice on, I call my dad. My dad's the hardest one. I'm like, okay, dad, let's role play this. And I'm like, did I make it clear enough? Did I make it simple enough? You know, and he has no problem telling me that I didn't. Um, and so then I go back and forth until we get it right. And we go over and over and it's the rep after rep after rep that will cause you to be the expert. I've got two things to add. One, when you said it's boring, I remember people used to come and shadow us on the team and they'd come for the day because they wanted to come and see what does a top producing mega agent team look like? And they would leave after an hour because they were so bored. They're like, okay, this is, this is so boring. We're leaving. And we were by the beach, so they'd go to the beach. Anyway, but the second thing I, I wrote down is that we don't have to... Um, overcomplicate practice and role play. We don't have to go out and find role play partners. We can, right? We, we have systems for that. But when I, in 2004, well, license 2003, 2004, right? I found the top producing agent in my market and he agreed to role play with me. I gave him every objection I was receiving on the phone. He role played with it, with me. I recorded it. I took it. I transcribed it. And by myself every day, I would read that over and over again. Look, at when you think about people who are in a play, you know, they're not always doing a dress rehearsal. Oftentimes they rehearse on their own, internalize it before they then go and practice with their castmates, right? So just remember, don't overcomplicate it, right? Practice on your own, internalize it, right? Don't overcomplicate that you need to have this fancy system set up. You don't. You practice by yourself such that when you're in the game, you'll be amazed at the responses that come out of your mouth without even trying. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? Well, because you've been practicing it, you've been internalizing it. And that's important. That's exactly right. What's your aha from today? Y'all put it in the chat. What stuck out to you? What did you identify as your biggest opportunity of the top five strategies? The, the, if you focused on this one strategy or you nailed this one strategy out of the five, Time blocking, pre-qualification, clear value proposition, knowing your numbers or role playing consistently. What would have the biggest impact in your business? Put it in the chat. I'm curious. You know, Emily, while they're putting that in the chat, here's my biggest takeaway. If we're not working on ourselves, right, and committing to investing in ourselves from an educational standpoint, we're going to be missing a lot of business. And the whole reason why we're here and while you guys are here, right, is to learn. And look at listings is a big word because when you look at the listing process, it starts from legion, it then goes into appointment, and then of course it then goes into taking, you know, managing listings and of course referrals after the fact. And so the mega listing agent, which is what's launching next week, we go through all of that in detail, do we not? We do. We leave nothing on the field. We do it all because that's what's needed right now. And Emily, are we, is this theory or is this from the trenches? Cause that's where you and I live most of the time. <laughs> yeah, no, we did this. Yeah. So what you get in this program is not things that sound good. It's from the trenches, what's working and what's winning right now. 
Yep, absolutely. And what I'll add to that is for those of you who are thinking, well, what it what does my what should my calendar look like? How what is the pre-qualification script? How do I get clear on the numbers that I should be tracking? What does that look like uh, with, you know, conversations or how does your consultation go or what are the objection handlers in today's market? That's literally y'all, we give you the playbook. We go in depth. We're super, as you could probably tell from, from our call today, we're, we're super interactive and you get to spend the next nine weeks with Aaron and I, and ask all the questions and, uh, get really granular on how to become the top listing agent in your market, which I think we all can agree. You got a list to last and our markets are changing. And so this nine week course, um, Here's what Robin is with maps and Robin has a special discount code for everyone who's attended today, just for your time to. Wow. Robin, that's so nice. So if you'd like to get 15% off, um, of this course signing up today, go ahead and put your phone number in the chat and Robin will text you and get you set up on, um, a discount. But that's what Aaron and I would like to offer to y'all today, just of our gratitude for y'all hanging out with us. But again, it's 500 bucks. Think about the average commission across the nation right now. Let's say it's $7,500, okay? If you took one listing just by attending our course, the return on investment is over four, which Gary says anything over a four to one is a no-brainer. Emily, it's not if. It's not if. If you show up, then, yeah. take the baby steps from each week, it's impossible not to come out of this without an increase in production. Absolutely. I mean, we've had people who have taken it two, three times, four times. I've got some five timers. Uh, I have a coaching client who's literally taken it five times. I'm not even kidding y'all. And I coach her. <laughs> like, um, But every time she's like, my listing business just increases. So there's only so much time that we can spend on our coaching calls. So um, this is, this is absolutely a, a great course. We're super passionate about listings and we just have a heart to help and help other agents not do a lot of the mistakes and failures that we made because Aaron and I, uh, just so y'all know, we failed a lot. <laughs> well, and here's, here's what I love about the listing business. You know, when it comes to Legion, which is where we start, there's no one way to skin this cat, right? right? And and we there's something for everyone. We go through the different options, right? We've had success and failures at all of it, right? And so, you know, we're not single track minded in terms of this is the only way to go out and do it. We're going to share with you what works, no matter what personality style, no matter what comfort level you have from a Legion standpoint, I guarantee you there will be something in there for you that you can take and implement and get results, period, and a story. Yep. All right. Do we leave all right, it all out there? Well, we appreciate your time. We trust that you got some good information. We can't wait to see you all next Wednesday on our launch. And um, we'll see you next Wednesday. 1.30 Central. That's our time. See you, everybody. Bye.